Hello Blazers, so it is your boy Roman, your favorite neighborhood Russian. Hi guys, doing today? Welcome to a brand new video. In today's video, guys, we're going to be talking about some huge protests going on currently in Russia that Russia will not tell you about. What we're going to be discussing today is actually unprecedented in Russia, and it's like an, a complete anomaly, something that's never been seen before. You see, currently in Russia, for the past uh, over 10 days, almost two weeks, in a pretty major city of Khabarovsk, which has almost 600,000 residents, there's been anti-government, anti-Putin protests going on, which have not been actually stopped by any law enforcement and basically almost nobody has been arrested because the police is actually on the side of the protesters this is insane because i don't know if you guys know but usually in russia when a protest or a demonstration is organized meaning an anti-governmental anti-putin protest usually immediately amon which is the russian SWAT, basically arrives and they just arrest everybody and beat the shit out of everybody because you know russia is just a country that has no human rights i guess and usually hundreds if not thousands are arrested. Well, this time it's different because this time it is so based, it is so peaceful that the Russian government actually is sending in uh, police and uh, SWAT teams essentially from other regions of the country to try to stop the demonstrations. Now, the reason why this video said the protest that Russia won't really tell you about is because on Russian TV, once again, just like with every other anti-governmental and anti-Putin protest, if you open up any Russian news network on TV and if you try to look at the current events and what's going on in Khabarovsk, you will not really find anything because uh, you know according to the russian tv there are never any anti-governmental and anti-putin process in russia those don't exist everybody loves them in fact guys if you remember some of my previous videos if you remember this legend that i called the russian alex jones vladimir solovyov he describes the people attending the protest as a bunch of uh, unwashed drunk peasants essentially почему федеральный канал не показывают митинги на тв а зачем а почему их должны показывать весь этот Всю эту пьяную погонь по ночам. Oh, and also, guys, by the way, recently a member of Alexei Navalny's team, who actually was reporting on the, all these events live and making a ton of videos about it, he got mysteriously jumped by three unknown men in front of the entrance to his uh, apartment building where he lives. So, you know, let's pray that the same doesn't happen to me. <laughs> but, you know, like, hundreds of people wanted me to make this video, so I'm doing it. Okay, so let's talk about this. What is going on in the city of Khabarovsk? Why are thousands of people, tens of thousands of people, going outside and protesting and marching down the streets what is the context? Why is this going on? And what is the overall political situation in the Khabarovsk region? So what happened is that on the 10th of July, the governor of the Khabarovsk region, Sergei Furgal, was arrested. Furgal has been the governor of the Khabarovsk region, Khabarovsk Krai, for almost two years. And the reason he was arrested is that apparently the Kremlin found some connections or some evidence due to, to the fact that he was involved with some sort of hired hitman operation back uh, in 2005, so 13 years ago. And essentially, the Russian government is trying to jail Sergei Furgal for uh, killing a business associate or, you know, hiring a hitman to kill a business associate 15 years ago. Now, I'm not here to discuss whether he's guilty or not, because that actually doesn't really matter in the context of what we're talking about today. Here's the thing. The main governing party of Russia, essentially the party that runs Russia, because Russia is practically almost a one-party state, only one party matters in Russia, and that is the party called Yedinaya Russia, or United Russia. And the thing is that United Russia, Russia is so powerful that they basically don't let anybody from any other party run any sort of region. Pretty much any region of Russia you look up and you look for the governor, for the mayor of certain huge cities, it's always gonna be a member of United Russia. It's never, it's never someone else. Well, here's the issue. Sergei Furgal, the governor of the Khabarovsk region, was not from United Russia. He's actually a member of LDPR, or the Liberal Democratic Party of Russia. Now, this may sound like this is an oppositional party or something and they're based, but they're really not, you know. The Yure, I mean, yeah, they are an oppositional party, but de facto, they're just a party that is controlled by United Russia. It's like a fake oppositional party, essentially. And this party usually doesn't actually object to United Russia in any way, and it's not a real political competitor to the United Russia. It's just there to make it seem like this country is democratic, essentially. And Sergei Furgal himself, essentially, was not much of an oppositional person. He's never said anything like against Putin or against United Russia out loud. He's not like a super oppositional guy or anything. However, the problem here is that 
the United Russia Party wants to control and own the entirety of Russia. But the Khabarovsk region is an exception because the governor there has won the election against the candidates of the United Russia. And also the city Duma, you know, the city parliament essentially, also almost has nobody from United Russia in it. It's mainly almost a, uh, a liberal democratic party of Russia kind of region. And the thing is, is that the region of Khabarovsk for some reason is a very, very oppositional region. And the people of Khabarovsk literally on every single election vote the fuck out of United Russia. United Russia gets wrecked on every single election there. Which really, really annoys Putin. Now you guys know that recently on the 1st of July there's been an election in Russia or a referendum for the new amendments to the constitution. The idea of which was basically to make Putin the president for our rights. And as you guys know, the results were that like 72% of Russians were for, uh, you know, the amendments to the constitution, stuff like that. Well, the thing is that the votes that turned out in the Khabarovsk Krai was actually also extremely low. So essentially, Furgal and his government did not really do much to make Putin look good in the Khabarovsk region. They did not really want to play by Putin's, like, to Putin's flute, I guess. And also, even though Furgal was not outspokenly oppositional, him being in power and being a member of a different party other than United Russia and actually doing some good has made it so that uh, United Russia and Putin's ratings of approval in the Khabarovsk region are like the lowest across the entirety of Russia. Now on top of all of that, Furgal, even though he's part of Putin's regime technically because he's in a party that is, you know, fake opposition, he has been a little bit of an exception because he's actually made some really good changes to the Khabarovsk region and to the city of Khabarovsk. In particular, for example, he's done a lot to actually lower the corruption in the region. He's fired a lot of governmental workers that are just not needed, so he's lowered the amount of staff. And he's also lowered the salaries of governmental officials that are just ridiculous usually. And also even lowered his own salary and has done a lot for the finances within the region to be spread and used more efficiently and uh, not just go into someone's pockets. So not only is this guy very popular within Khabarovsk and the region, he's also a big pain in the ass for Putin and the United Russia. And since he got arrested, it led many people to the conclusion that essentially this is just a way for Putin or United Russia to just get, get rid of him. And so tons of people march on the streets of Khabarovsk without even really being organized. So everybody that is so based that they just decided, yeah, let's stand up for our own freedom and just get out there. They're woke as fuck, dude. It's awesome. And so the protests have been going on for over 10 days now and they're continuing throughout day and night. I mean, obviously people have jobs, so people leave and come back. Some people are just out there protesting like 24 seven. I mean, it's crazy. And the most astonishing thing is that the police and the protests are barely arresting anybody. This is like the most free and liberal demonstration ever in the history of Russia. And guys, yet again, on the Russian TV, you can barely hear about these protests. I mean, they either not mention them completely or they undermine their uh, their sheer scale and they're like yeah like two people came out nobody cares uh, a bunch of drunks without a street of Chabad of whatever it just amazes me the absolute disregard for the people that actually want a fair and democratic country and fair and democratic elections and that want to get rid of corruption and just want to have a leader a governor of their region of, the, of their city that they could trust the absolute disregard for these people and hatred for these people in the Russian state media is just insane to me all the people that went out on the streets of Khabarovsk are good hard-working people that care about their city and care about the region. That's all it is. And basically what people are just demanding is that even if Furgal is actually guilty of the crime he's been accused of, he should be trialed in an open court that could be seen by everybody in Khabarovsk. Not in some closed trial that is not accessible by anybody because that's what's going on right now in Moscow. They want a fair and good trial and they just want to make sure that this is not a politically uh, charged arrest. That it's not just a political move, which it seems like it is. Because Furgal actually was a member of the Russian state Duma. He's been a Russian governmental official for a very long time. So that it's so it's very very suspicious that it's only now that the Russian government actually started, you know, talking about this case of him, like, killing somebody 15 years ago. And somehow, for the rest of his political career, nobody cared. But once he actually became big, that's when they decided to care. And that's when they decided to arrest him. Now, here's the thing. This story gets even worse and even more convoluted. Because, obviously, Furgal got arrested and he's the governor of the Khabarovsk region. So, uh, when he is under trial, obviously, the region needs a new uh, governor. And what happened is that Moscow assigned a new uh, acting governor of the Khabarovsk region, Mikhail Di 
Dikterov. Now, not only is this guy not even slightly connected to the city of Khabarovsk, he was never, he never even lived in the city of Khabarovsk, he's not a governmental official from Khabarovsk, he's from Moscow, and he was just sent there to govern the entire region. Now, here's the thing, this Mikhail Dikterov guy is also a member of the Liberal Democratic Party of Russia, so he's not even a member of United Russia, and the idea here is that the Moscow and Putin was like, I guess, yeah, we arrested your governor that you liked very much, uh, but guess what, we have a new one as a replacement, and he's actually from the same party, he's not even from United Russia, check that out guys, he's not like a shell or something. But the thing is that it doesn't really work like that. I mean, when it comes to politics, right, you would expect that if a governor that, you know, is a member of your party got jailed, you would try very hard to, like, fight for him if you were a leader of that party, right? You would oppose Putin, you would oppose United Russia, and you'd be like, hey, come on, that is not right, you know, that was my guy. <laughs> well, uh, no, that's not what's going on. The leader of the Liberal Democratic Party of Russia, Vladimir Zhirinovsky, isn't really doing much to, uh, you know, help his buddy, uh, Furgal. And also just the fact that they sent the member of the same party to replace him, and everybody just hates him, you know? I guess Moscow thought that sending a member of the same party to replace Furgal would like, you know, be okay with the people there, but people actually went out and it started the second wave of protests now, now the protests now are not only for Furgal, for, you know, for him to be freed, you know, free my guy, but they're also anti Mikhail Dikterov, who is the new acting uh, governor of the Khabarovsk region, but he's actually from the same party, and like the fact that he agreed to this, and that, you know, he's replacing the guy who's been wrongly, maybe, maybe wrongly arrested, and uh, is kind of playing it into the entire thing, you know, it shows that there's a lot of infighting in the, in the parties, so, so don't think of it as like if they're members of the same party, they're all like the same and they're all opposing Putin or whatever. No, that's not what that means. This shows exactly how he was like a sort of a good member of that party and uh, he, you know, everybody loved him in the city. But as soon as somebody from the same party comes in and replaces him, for, you know, for such an unjust reason, people get very, very mad. So yeah, basically, again, all these protests come down to the fact that just like always, it's the same story with uh, like the rest of Russia. The problem with the majority of Russia is that nobody cares about the regions of this country. It's very rare that a city gets a good governor or a city gets a good mayor that actually cares about that city. Because, for example, for my city, Chelyabinsk, why is my city such a shithole? It's because pretty much every governor, pretty much every mayor that we ever had in this city for the last, like, 20 years, they've been sent out from Moscow and they have zero relation to Chelyabinsk. They don't care about the city. All they use the city for is to, you know, get as much money as they can and then just leave. The city just gets robbed of everything, it just gets completely completely destroyed and uh, the guy that came from Moscow just goes back to Moscow with all this money that he earns from this city, from this poor city of Chilevinsk, you know? Well, Khabarovsk was actually a city that had a had a hope. It was one of these regions where they actually had a governor that actually cared and actually was doing some good. And the governor that, on top of everything, was not member of the United Russia Party, which very much annoyed Moscow. And now, since he got arrested, that basically removed all signs of hope for Khabarovsk. Because the people of Khabarovsk understand that because Furgal is gone, they're just gonna be replacing him with some uh, shitheads from Moscow, which is just gonna be embezzling the city, you know, stealing money, being extremely corrupt, they're not gonna do any good for the city. And of course, everybody went out on the streets to protest that. And I, 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 I just, my deepest respects and my biggest support is going out to the people of Khabarovsk right now, you know, you go guys, you stand up. Nobody actually knows what this is gonna end up in yet, but just the fact that this is happening and that the police in Khabarovsk are actually on the side of the protesters and they're not coughing people, they're not beating people up, they're not arresting literally everybody they see, including kids, women, whatever. That means that there is still hope in this country and maybe someday when thousands go out on the streets of Moscow and uh, the police gets an order to arrest everybody and, uh, you know, shoot everybody, they will not do that and instead they'll think about uh, who they're fighting against. So yeah guys, that is going to be pretty much it for today's video, this video on Russian protests that, has got, that are going around right now. I hope you guys did find this video interesting and entertaining. If you guys did, please make sure to slap the like on this video. And also guys, if you want to support my channel, support what I do on this channel, make sure to go over down in the description to my Patreon link, donate to it, I would gladly appreciate it. It helps me out a lot, financially supports me and my family. And also guys, another means of supporting me is going down to the description once again. There's a link to my YouTube figure which you can buy and also is a way to support me and also get yourself a little souvenir of sorts. And yeah guys, once again, thank you so much for watching today's video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.